Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. I do not know why I can't be in the middle. There, that's better, isn't it? I just have to lean to the side. I guess my camera must point to an angle. At any rate, uh, someone sent me this article. I clicked on the link, and I, I'm sorry, but the font is too small, and I can't read it. But the email, he titled it, Yes, It's a Cult Ritual. And since we're, you know, talking about Halloween this weekend, I thought this would be a good time to bring this up. Don't people wear masks at Halloween? Yeah, seems like when I was a kid. Sometimes that's all my parents could afford was one of those cheap plastic masks. And we just put our regular clothes on and a coat because I'm from Akron, Ohio, and we, we were Catholic. You know, I was raised to celebrate Halloween. It, it, was, it was a real big deal because we couldn't afford candy in my family. We had a huge family. So Halloween was our, Halloween and Christmas and Easter were our three times of the year that we got candy. So it was a really big deal to us kids. Got, got that? Okay, so it, it carried over into my adult years. All right, until I learned the truth of it all. And uh, anyway, moving on, it's called um, From um, Representations of Masked Figures, A Comparative Study, and an Interpretive Approach to Their Cult Use and Meanings. And there's the link, and I'm just going to read you this little excerpt that he put in the email. This is from somebody named Trevor. Thank you very much, Trevor, for passing this along. The use of masks is a common element in ceremonies and rites of passage in many cultures, both as a means to express the change and transformation from one state to another when worn by the initiate, or in parentheses, they've got parentheses, mist, M-Y-S-T-E, slash, youth, close parentheses, and as an object of fear when worn by others in order to intimidate the mist, or youth, a consistent aspect of the rites of passage. It appears that at the Cave of the Nymphs in Lekhov, L-E-C-H-O-V, Lekova, A at the end, a kind of dramina or ritual performance slash or dash drama or mimetic action, close parentheses, took place. So at, it appears that at the cave of the nymphs in Lekova, a kind of drama or ritual performance um, or mimetic action took place. The figurines may reflect this ritual and serve as a reminder of the participants. Kind of a history lesson, wouldn't you say? Well, speaking of masks being worn by people that are being transformed from one state to another. This is like when in masonry, before you get to go from one number, you know, you start off at a one, first degree, and then you work your way up to a second degree and third degree, and the more things you're willing to do, the more things you participate in, the higher up you go until you get to be a 33rd degree Freemason. Who are all evil and serve Satan. We all know that. And don't think for a minute. Christians are not involved. One of the first things they have to do. Is to join a Christian church. I know this firsthand. My last husband's sister. Was married to a serviceman. Who when he got stationed in Anniston. Because of her illness. 
and they had moved to Aniston, and she, he had to stay near her. So they let him work out of Aniston Army Depot, or the base there. Maybe it was Fort McClellan, whichever. There was two Army-related things there in Aniston, plus the reserves. Well, anyway, he joined the Masons. He was invited. He went to a meeting. He joined, and he told us all about it. He said, but I have to join a Christian church. He said, we don't have to go all the time. We just have to belong. So they can claim to be Christians. You know, Billy Graham was a 33rd degree Mason. What about his son? Hmm, I don't know. I thought Franklin was a good guy. You could do your research on that. There's plenty of them. Anyway, I wanted to let you know that speaking of masks and transformations from one state to another, I just uploaded a video this morning on a different platform that was shown first on the Stu Peters radio show kind of thing where he has a guest on, you know, and they tell what they know based on their research or experience or whatever. And she tells it all what she knows, and it's very, very interesting. So I'm going to link it in the description box. I will link this article, and you check them out if you want to, but I pray that you will. It's on Paul and Adrian's Off-Grid Desert Farming by Paul and Adrian channel on another social media platform. Okay, that's all I can say about that. I cannot tell you any more on this platform. So with that, I'm going to say bye for now, y'all. Have a blessed day. I'll talk to you later. I hope real soon. I hope in person. Okay, bye for now. See ya.